Hi, I'm Matt. Hey, I'm Jess. We're counselors at Appalachian State University here with another one of our virtual workshop series from Healthy Emotions and Life Skills. Today we're going to be talking a lot about interpersonal effectiveness or essentially um, how do we navigate challenging moments in important relationships. So before we get started, we have a little bit of informed consent information to go over with you. This and our other quick access virtual workshops at the Counseling Center are not intended to be treatment or an emergency response. They're simply psychoeducational in their nature. If you're curious more about uh, what services at the Counseling Center, check out our website or give us a call. If you're experiencing a mental health emergency like active suicidal thoughts, please check out our website to visit emergency resources or call your local emergency response resources available might differ based on your location. Finally, this workshop is going to be recorded and shared um, through our social media accounts. And again, if you have an emergency or need emergency help, check out the emergency tab on the Counseling Center's webpage for some more information on what to do. So I'll turn it over now to Jess, who will go over some of our objectives and start our presentation. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, so for our objectives today, as Matt said, we'll be working on interpersonal effectiveness and kind of talking you through that. So first, we'll define what interpersonal effectiveness is and what that means. Then we're going to describe three types of effectiveness and take you through some examples of what each of those might look like. Next, we're going to learn skills for each of these objectives so you can get some uh, applicable practice for your day-to-day -day life. And we're going to practice skills for navigating our relationships. Last, we're going to save some time for information of how you can submit questions and how you can attend our next workshop. So to begin, if any of you have tuned in for Heels workshop one, we talked about mindfulness and grounding, and we're gonna start each of these workshops with an experience that's related to grounding or meditation. So today is a loving kindness meditation. Once again, if you can find yourself in a comfortable seat, pay attention to how your body feels supported on the ground, the chair, the bed, whatever you're sitting on. Relax your head and neck. Maybe close your eyes if you feel comfortable or use a gentle gaze. And you can say this with me or just listen. I'm going to read these words and as I read, take a deep inhale and exhale. Notice the sensation as you listen to these words. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Adopt a deeper inhale this time. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain last time. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Take a few more deep breaths in this moment and with this sentiment in your heart. When you're ready, you can call your attention back to the space that you're in maybe wiggling your fingers or your toes, gently opening up your eyes, become aware of the room around you, some of the things you see, some of the things you hear. Thank you for joining us in that. It's a beautiful way to begin our introduction to this content. Uh, it's helpful to consider loving kindness and holding that in your heart when dealing with difficult interpersonal situations with others. So what is interpersonal effectiveness? 
This is how you get what you want while maintaining a relationship and keeping your own self-respect. And many situations in life present themselves that it can be difficult to either maintain a positive relationship with someone or maintain our self-respect. So we're gonna go over some techniques and continue to explain to you different types of interpersonal effectiveness and how you can use those techniques to both maintain your relationships and that sense of self-respect. So there's a few ways to be effective in your interpersonal relationships. Um, there's three types. The first is objective effectiveness. And this is similar to assertiveness. This is attaining your objective or your goal in a particular situation. Or, you know, more specific, what results do I want? What do I want to get out of this? You know, what do I need out of this situation? So that's your objective effectiveness. And this can be um, used in many different contexts. The next is your relationship effectiveness. So how do I keep or improve this relationship while at the same time trying to achieve my goal? And we can ask ourselves questions related to this, such as how do I want the other person to view me based on the way that I handle this situation? Also acting in a way that makes the other person actually want to give you what you want, back to that objective effectiveness. So working with others, so that you can actually get what you need out of the situation. And then again, balancing those goals with this long-term relationship. The last is self-respect. How do I want to view myself based on how I handle this situation? And this self-respect effectiveness means that we've maintained or improved the respect that we have for ourselves by respecting our own values and beliefs at the same time as trying to obtain what we want. Um, this could be standing up for ourselves or defending a friend, maybe stepping forward and saying something courageous. So we're respecting ourselves or improving our self-respect while still working on getting those results that we want. And these can be difficult. It might be helpful to kind of take a minute here and think about which type of effectiveness seems harder for you in your life, which type of effectiveness seems easy, you know, what you might be drawn to more and which may take a little bit more work, or you could benefit from some of these exercises that we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna walk through some examples of using different types of effectiveness or kind of being mindful of what those might look like. So in our first example, consider a situation where you need to juggle your priorities. Your sister has always been a huge support system for you. She's always been there for you when you need her, but lately she's been annoying you by calling you too often. You're not necessarily wanting to pick up these calls, but you know that your sister's been there for you and you want her to feel supported too. So let's consider the objective effectiveness. Objectively, the result you want is to limit the phone calls so that you have more time for the other things you need or want to do. However, the relationship effectiveness is that you love your sister, you want to be good to her, and you want to pay her back for how she's helped you. Lastly, let's touch in on that self-respect effectiveness. You wanna have some control over how you spend your time to feel that you're respecting yourself and your needs. So your, our priorities might shift here, and each result or each answer here would be different for different people or could look like a combination of things. Maybe you decide to take that call so that your sister feels supported, but also say to her, I don't have too much time to talk today. I just wanted you to know that I'm here for you. That could be a balance or a um, compromise that takes into account some of these types of effectiveness and what your priorities might be. Let's look at another example. So say that your roommate never washes the dishes, and as a result, you have to do all of them. Objective effectiveness here, okay, so what do you want? You wanna get your roommate to do their share of the dishes. The relationship effectiveness piece would be that you wanna maintain a cordial relationship with your roommate um, and not make them mad, still have a, a good working relationship. And then the self-respect effectiveness. You don't want to feel like a doormat and you want to practice your own self-care. So again, your priorities might shift here. This is not your sister. This is your roommate. How do you want to handle it? 
Maybe it's, okay, well, the, the relationship between myself and the roommate isn't as important to me as this objective. I need more time. I need you to continue to do your dishes. Or again, maybe it can be a compromise. I want us to continue to have a good relationship roommate. However, I'm really needing some help because I need more time in such and such my day to day. There's like a balance and a shift. Often I feel like it can be a great opportunity to practice what these conversations might look like with a peer. Um, and if you think back about some of the difficult um, situations that are interpersonal in nature in your life, maybe you can go through and think of the objective effectiveness, think about the relationship effectiveness and the self-respect effectiveness, and find a way that really fits your personality, your values, and your style. I'm going to turn it over to Matt now, who's going to talk about some specific ways to remember how to implement some of these skills. There's a couple different acronyms that you can remember to keep in mind as you're working through each type of effectiveness. Thanks, Jess. So as Jess was talking about, there's three different pieces or types of effectiveness we need to keep in mind in any type of interpersonal situation. Our objective effectiveness, our relationship effectiveness, and self-respect effectiveness. And depending on our situation, one, two of these might be more important than the others. So we have some specific skills for each type of effectiveness so that no matter which way you're leaning, you've got the tools you need to have a successful sort of confrontation or conflict resolution. The first acronym here is called Dear Ma'am. These are our skills for objective effectiveness, making sure we're able to attain our goals. The D in Dear Man stands for Describe. Explain the situation while sticking to the facts. We're not trying to accuse the other person of anything. We are just trying to make sure everyone's on the same page, knows what, what we're talking about when we're bringing up some type of situation. Express, we're gonna share our feelings using I statements. We wanna avoid using you do this or you say that because we wanna keep the focus on ourselves. By doing so, by saying I and starting with our own emotions, we help communicate more clearly to the other person and we provoke less defensiveness in the other person. So they're more likely to listen to and hear what we're saying instead of just argue back. We also want to assert ourselves. Remember, assert, being assertive is different from being aggressive. We're not being mean or cruel. We're still listening, but we're also being very clear and firm in saying no when it's appropriate. And of course, we want to reinforce positives. So if the situation were to change, if you were to get your way, we want to be clear and explain how that would improve the situation for both parties involved in the conflict. We also want to reward the person when we see them doing what we want. We don't just want to communicate with people when we see them doing something we don't like or they're making a mistake. Negative um, interactions need to be balanced by positive reinforcement. So we want to be really mindful and intentional about including reinforcement in our communications. The M stands for staying mindful throughout the interaction. If we're thinking about our objective, it can get really easy to get lost in the weeds. Um, it could turn into, I said this, you said that, a big disagreement over technical points. We want to remember our goal here. What's the objective in this situation? It's very likely not to argue with the other person um, about your two different perspectives of conflict. It's to get your goal in. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our goal in mind so that our communications line up with that goal. We also want to appear confident. There's research that shows that when we stand in confident positions or believe that we are more confident than we actually are, our actual confidence catches up. So simply by appearing confident and in control of a situation, we send really important messages to other people and to ourselves that we actually are confident and we can do this and we're more likely to be heard and respected. We also want to negotiate when it's appropriate. If you're asking something from someone else, very likely there's a situation where we need to also be open to doing what other people request of us. If you, are, you have some specific ideas of how to resolve the situation, make sure you're including the other person in that discussion. Ask them for ideas or solutions. Maybe there's something that you haven't thought of or there's a unique perspective that other person has that's really helpful here. So by negotiating, by listening, using our confidence to make sure we're showing good eye contact, body language that faces the other person, we're actively listening, 
we can turn this into a two-way conversation that hopefully stays productive. So as an example, let's say you are friends with someone in a nearby room in your residence hall. The, you're not close friends, but you're definitely friendly. This person is seeing um, someone who is in Europe, so they only talk at night because of the time difference. After the conversations, this friend often comes into your room to talk about what happened on the phone call. Maybe their relationship's in trouble and they want your help. But because they're coming in and talking to you in the middle of the night, you're having trouble sleeping, you're waking up more irritable, you're having trouble concentrating in your classes, not a position you want to be in. How might we use Dear Man to help navigate this situation? I'll give you a second to reflect on this yourself and take, take a look at some of these skills. Think about ways different skills could be applied in the situation we're using it as an example now. If we're thinking about being fair and describing, we wanna make sure that we're providing a summary of the situation, telling your friend exactly what you're observing. Even if we're feeling a little bit irritable, we wanna keep that in mind, we wanna keep that in check and not just start accusing our friend of doing anything malicious or bad because that can shut the conversation down before it starts. We want to start using I statements. I feel more tired or less focused in my classes uh, because of our conversations. So we, again, we want to keep the focus on ourselves to keep things productive. We want to be assertive. Remember, we have a goal in mind. We want to be assertive to make sure we reach that goal of reducing or stopping these late night conversations. If you see this friend out and talk to them during the day, even if it, maybe you have a conversation during the day about the relationship instead of at night, at the end of that conversation, that could be a great time to reinforce how you appreciate this friend or like talking to them and are really glad that you're able to do that during the day. Uh, so again, we wanna make sure that if there's a change in behavior or they're doing something you do enjoy, we're noticing it, we're praising it. Remember our goal here, it's very likely to reduce some of these con the late night conversations. Our goal may also be to do that while maintaining the friendship. So we wanna keep that in mind when we're thinking about how directly and assertively we're communicating. Appearing confident, remember, can be a big part of it. We have an objective in mind and we're gonna show confidence that we, we believe we deserve to meet that objective. And of course, negotiate when and where appropriate. You can't just have someone barge into the middle of, in, into your room in the middle of the night without your permission. So that's not a point we might negotiate. But what we might negotiate is if you'd like to continue your discussions with this friend, picking a new time and place that works for both of you. So that could be a piece where we're more open to being flexible and diplomatic. So those are our dear man skills. Remember, that's just one example. They can be applied really broadly to a whole host of situations whenever we have objective effectiveness in mind. When we're thinking about uh, how important relationships are, remember if the relationship is a really key piece of navigating the conflict, we wanna maintain a strong relationship with the other person our give skills are what we're going to be leaning on more. In this case, the give acronym stands for being gentle, acting interested, validating, and using an easy manner. The acronym is not perfect, but it's good enough. Taking a look at gentle, we want to be nice and respectful, even when we're discussing serious matters. Just because we're in a conflict with someone doesn't mean that we don't and they don't deserve respect. We want to avoid personal attacks, threats, judging, being dismissive, rolling our eyes, that's much less, if we act in that way, it's much less likely that we get what we want, and it's much less likely that we maintain a strong relationship. We wanna act interested when the other person's speaking. Maybe there's important information that they have that we don't know. So we really wanna make sure that this is a two-way conversation. When the other person is sharing, we need to validate what they're saying. This allows the other person to feel heard, understood, and like they're an active participant here and helps build strong relationships, even in a moment of conflict. And finally, using an easy manner, being diplomatic, using humor when appropriate, avoiding a negative attitude are all ways to make even challenging conflicts pass more smoothly, more quickly. So we can keep these give skills in mind. when We wanna make sure that we've got a strong relationship to continue even after this conflict ends. So imagine you have a really good friend who does not have a car, and they often ask you for a ride to the store to get groceries, like daily. You care about your friend, you know they need to eat, they need groceries. 
it's important that they're able to make, do their errands, but it's really time consuming for you to drive them around or for them to take your car. Um, and it takes time away from, from your own work and your own study. So using give skills, think about how you might approach a conversation with your friend um, about how you're no longer able to give them rides every time they ask. Take a second to think about how you might apply some of these. And again, when we're talking about our give skills, where it's almost a, not only these skills, but it's also an attitude. So we're, we're approaching this interaction in an open-ended way. We're trying to be as nice and cordial as possible. We're trying to be respectful. Remember, this is a good friend and it's very likely that maybe even despite you know, this one thing that bothers you, there's a lot of other good qualities about that friendship that you enjoy and want to keep. So we want to keep that in mind when we're approaching this con conversation. We know we can't give them a ride to the store every day. We want to make sure we're communicating that clearly and effectively using something like Dear Man, but we also want to use skills like having a gentle manner, acting interested when the other person speaks, validating their perspective. Maybe it's financially it's, it's not feasible for them to have a car. We want to be understanding when they say something like that and using an easygoing manner, making sure that while even while you're communicating about something serious, you're able to use effective humor or a pleasant attitude too. And our last set of skills is for maintaining self-respect effectiveness. Self-respect effectiveness is often really hard for people, uh, even over and above our other types of effectiveness. So these might be some skills to really focus in on. The acronym here is FAST. Being fair to yourself and the other person, not apologizing in an unwarranted way, sticking to your values, and being truthful and honest. When we think about self-respect effectiveness, imagine that your confrontation or your conversation with someone else was recorded and you had to watch it back later. When we have self-respect effectiveness in mind, when that's important to us, we wanna be able to watch that recording and feel good about what we said and did. We don't wanna cringe, we don't wanna recoil or feel guilty or bad. We wanna look back on that conversation and know that we acted in a way that we'd like to be seen by other people. That's self-respect and effectiveness. And these are the skills that help us get there. So we wanna be fair. It's, it's relatively rare that someone does something on purpose to hurt us. That's rarely someone's intention. So we wanna hear other people out when they explain why they're doing something in a way that's upsetting to you. No apologies is often a really challenging skill for people. Apologizing can be a kind of a default that people go into but we don't want to over apologize. That can be you know, a, a communication to other people that something is our fault, when in reality it might not be at all. It's not wrong of you to make a request, a reasonable request to someone else. Um, and we don't want to apologize for actions that we had no role in. So that's something to be firm about when we're approaching these types of conversations. Sticking to values, think about things that are centrally important to you. Maybe it's being a good helper, or being someone who uh, has a lot of integrity. When we're approaching these conversations, think about the language that you're using, the tone you're using, how you're communicating with someone else. Stick to your values, stick to your guns here, because at the end of the day, this conversation is going to end, but our values are gonna be with us for life. So we wanna make sure that we're honoring those as much as possible. And finally, being truthful, even if a small lie might feel easier or be easier to deliver than the truth, the truth is important, especially in the long term, um, and especially if some of those other skills like relationship effectiveness are important. We want to be really open and honest with people that we care about, just like we would appreciate them to be honest with us. So do unto others how you'd like to be treated. That's what being truthful uh, really has at its essence. And not just lying, but we don't want to exaggerate or lie by omission. We don't want to make up excuses. If we've done something wrong, um, if we've made a mistake, we want to own it. That often comes across really strongly to the other person um, and maybe make them more likely or more open to negotiating with us, even if it's a tough issue. So those are our three types of, uh, three sets of skills for our three types of effectiveness. I hope that some of these end up being helpful to you in your day-to-day -day life. 
um, especially if you're maybe quarantined away with some people who can get on your nerves after a while. Using interpersonal effectiveness can be a really helpful way of smoothing out conflicts or even preventing conflicts before they get bad. If you've got questions, uh, would like some more information about some of the skills we've offered today, check out the Counseling Center's website. We've got a lot of great self-help materials and further reading for you. Or check out our website or give us a call um, to get connected with a counselor if you're interested in some more long-term help. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about distress tolerance. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>